I'm Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. So today's video we are doing A051 programming. Yes, it is our third video of A051 programs. You would notice in all our courses the maximum number of programs that we discuss is in A051 because that's the whole idea. It's a microcontroller. It's used in embedded systems. Once you know AD51, you can start building projects. You can learn bigger microcontrollers and make serious projects and make a career out of embedded systems. You plan to do that, you need to be good at programming. You cannot be away from programming and have those big dreams because then it's not going to happen. So that's the idea. In AD51, master the skill of writing programs. Programming is a skill. Once you know it for one processor, you'll be good with it for all processors. Then you just have to adjust to the instructions. But the idea of writing programs is just learned once. So master that while you're learning H051. Our first program today is one of my favorite questions. They've given you a circuit. The question is write a program to simulate this circuit. Yeah, exactly. The same expression that you got right now is what students get when they see this in the paper and they are unprepared. They've never seen something like this before. They go crazy. How do you solve a circuit using 8051? Never heard of something like this. People think it's tough. It's not at all tough. It's very simple once you know how to start it. Once you get your idea of what are A, B, C, D, E, F possible values and what could be the possible value of G. Once some particular idea clicks your mind, after that this program will fall down like a pack of cards. For everything that you see on the board, there is a direct instruction. Just put the correct instruction. The program will be from here to here and that's it. Job done. You'll get full marks. Next. That's the best thing about programs as compared to theory answers. You know programs properly, always attempt them in the exam because a correct program gives you full marks. A correct theory answer will give you nearly full marks, 8 out of 10, 7 out of 10, 9 out of 10 if it's really well written. But a program can give you full marks in no time. Next, a bigger one. Now this is something that you will see very regularly. Go through your own college university papers. Every third, fourth paper you will see a question like this. The question is, there is a list of numbers. Find out how many of them are positive or negative. Very popular question. Like I said, every third, fourth paper you'll see it. They may either tell you assume the list, so you take your own numbers, or they may give a list of numbers in the exam. Let's say this is the list of numbers that they've given. This list is stored in the memory. First, we'll create a pointer that points to this location. We'll create a loop count. We will create a loop. In the loop, we will access each element. Once you get the element in your hand, you will evaluate whether it's positive or negative. We will maintain two counters at any location, since it's not given in the question, the location is your choice. Let's say location 20 and 21. Every time we encounter a positive number, we will increment this counter. Every time we get a negative number, we'll increment this counter. We'll do this process in a loop. When our loop is over, we have evaluated all the numbers. The two counts over here should finally reveal the correct answer. Like in this series, one, two, three, and four. As you see, there are four negative numbers. That means when our program is over, you should get a count of six over here for positive numbers and four for negative numbers. Are you clear? The program that I'm going to give you over here will be exactly the program that you can copy and type out in the simulator. Remember, we've done videos on EdSim simulator. Take this program, type it out on EdSim, run the program. As soon as you run it, right in front of you will be the answer. Verify the answer for yourself. You'll get the correct answer, then come here, change the series. Change the series, run the program again. You should get the correct answer. Increase the size of the series, change the count in your program, run the program again. You'll still get the correct answer. Change this label, do the change accordingly in the program, run the program again. This is what you do. Once you get a correct program, you play with it. You play with all its possibilities till the time you understand every line of code so that you're well prepared to handle a change. You don't learn programs, you learn programming, you learn the skill of writing programs. Once you are absolutely clear about all the code that you've written, you'll be able to handle a change. Here is your question, I'm going to give you a change now. This just came up in my mind right now. Once you know this program to find positive and negative numbers, I change the question now. Write a program to determine how many of these numbers are divisible by 5. It's still a series of numbers. The method of looping, the method of count, the method of accessing the data, all of that remains the same. What changes? Here, every time you got your number, you check whether it's positive or negative. Now in the new question, every time you get the number, you will divide it by 5. You will then look out for the remainder. Which register contains the remainder? <laughs> B. Remember? Anyway, you look for your remainder. If your remainder is 0, that means your number is divisible by 5. Once you know it's divisible by 5, keep a counter. Initialize that count with 0. Every time you encounter such a number which is divisible by 5, increment this counter. 
run your program with the whole loop. Once your loop is over, this counter will tell you how many of these numbers were really divisible by 5. Test it out on EdSim Simulator. Change these numbers. Change the question itself. Instead of divisible by 5, make it divisible by 4. That means you'll divide the number by 4 in your program. Run the program. You should get the correct answer. Do it till the time you're absolutely sure that yes, you know how to handle such kind of questions. Because like I said, once you have this skill, on a list of questions, there are so on list of numbers, there are so many questions that can be based. In all of them, the basic core of the program is the same. You still have to make a loop, you still have to access a series of numbers. Just one or two instructions in the middle of the program will change depending on what the question is. Anyway, so these are the programs that we're going to do. In the PDFs, I'm also going to give you the screenshots of the program running on EdSim Simulator so that when you run it, in case something doesn't work, you can verify it with the PDF. Now, this is what we're going to do in the video. This was an introduction. You want to watch the whole video? Come on my website, www.bharatacharyaeducation.com. Once you click there, you will see lots of courses. I teach several microprocessors and microcontrollers. Click on this course, that is 8051. Click the subscribe button. As soon as you make the payment, the course opens up for you. There are about 30, 35 videos. We've covered everything, architecture, introduction, pins, the whole memory model, all the registers, the entire instruction set, programming, tremendous number of programs, all the theory, serial port, interrupts, timers, etc., etc., and then various interfaces, LCD, LED, A to D converter, D to A converter, and so on. So, we've made lots of videos. We keep making videos. This is fun. Edu I love to educate. I this is my job. As more and more people request for videos, we keep adding more and more videos to the course. Watch all the videos. Your subscription is valid for six months. You can watch the videos as many times as you want to. Do you need to? Yes, absolutely. If you plan to make your career in embedded systems, if you want to start making small projects, go to big projects and then start your own company making all these systems. Make AD51 your base and make it so strong that from here you can launch to any higher processor. I teach ARM, I teach PIC. Students who learn those processors directly, they ask me, Sir, should we first start with AD51? That's what I always recommend. You don't learn basics when you learn higher processors. Are you listening to what I'm saying? ARM and PIC are modern controllers. They are so advanced that when you're learning them, nobody's going to teach you how interrupts work, how serial port works, how timers work. You assume to know all those things when you learn higher microcontrollers. So when you're doing the AD51 course, don't do it only from your exam point of view. Do it from the point of view that this is the platform on which I'm going to stand and make my career if this is the field that interests you. Okay, so watch the videos again and again. With every video, you get a PDF. In the PDF, you have everything pertaining to that video. Circuit diagrams, programs, the logic, whatever is done in the particular video, all of that is available in the PDF so that you don't need any other reference material. You watch the video, you learn the whole concept, you learn the idea. Click on view notes, open the PDF, see how to prepare for this in the exam. Are you clear? Plus, since we're talking about exams, you also get a PDF of Viva questions. You get a PDF of MCQs and our MCQs are of all categories. We have simple questions, tough questions, the real crazy questions in case you're preparing for entrance exams or you're preparing for interviews in big companies, Qualcomm, etc. They, they are coming to India and they are deeply into embedded systems. So if you're planning for an interview in those companies, they will ask you the real big questions, the tough ones. And we have in the MCQs, we keep adding more and more questions where we prepare you for the best of the possible scenario. Most importantly, you also have direct access to me. This is my WhatsApp number. Whenever you have a doubt, text me on this number. I will reply maybe immediately at that time if I'm free. If I'm not, by the end of the day, I try to reply to as many as I can, possibly all of them. Okay? Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Enjoy learning.